Radio check, uniform. 5 out of 5, Kermit. Again, uh, Bob's calling ahead so we don't have to get startup clearance, so go ahead and grab Adidas and get the APU up and let me know when you're ready for radio check using the frag frequencies, okay? Roger that, 335 on Fox and, uh, and what for Victor? Go 128 on Victor, okay, waiting for your mark. Something not right. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Okay, all systems up and alignment is started. Ready to copy. Great, here's the game plan for today. We're going to start with some useful options in the HUD set up, then we're going to move on to creating our flight plan. We'll briefly cover the waypoints of the tribute, then we'll then take off and continue with other stuff like checking the attribute behavior in flight, playing with the HSI, creating mark points, and last but not least, changing the anchor points. Ready? Yes, sir. Right on. All right, the HUD, I assume you have already finished a bit and switched on your IFSI. You now use the HUD in one of 
Five modes that can be changed by pressing the master mode control button on your stick. A-Firm. Navigation, guns, CCIP, CCRP, and air-to-air. -air. Good. Don't get carried away with the air-to-air -air part, though, as we'll be training on that mode in one of our upcoming sorties. Great. Can't wait. Let's first get back to the basics, shall we? Go ahead and push that if the button back into the test or middle position, please. Done. Okay, you'll notice that the HUD has changed. It is now displaying a series of menus. You can use these to configure the IFC system. In order to navigate through them, you'll use the USC. With me so far? Yes, ready to move on. So the select rocker switch changes the line selection up and down. Data cycles the line selection, and enter lets you select the line option. Go ahead and see how it works, and let me know when you're ready to move on. I'm ready. Let's move from the top to the bottom of the list while going a bit deeper into some of the more useful options. The first line, called a CGIP Consent Option, lets you choose the CGIP Consent Release Mode, which we'll cover more in detail when we get to drop some bombs. Copy. The next line is called FIT, or Built-In Test Menu. It is used to test several chosen if subsystems or all of them at once like you already did in your normal startup. Alright. Third line is called AAS or the air-to-air -air sub menu. We will get into more details on the air-to-air -air training I mentioned before, but for now, suffice it to say that you use this menu to alter and select the gun funnel for air-to-air -air combat by using either presets or manual settings. Copy. The gun must be totally devastating to air targets. Oh yeah. Did you read about Captain Bob Swain, the guy who scored the first air-to-air -air kill with the Avenger back in 1991, described hitting the Iraqi Hilo with 300 rounds? Nope. What did he say? That it looked like if the helicopter was hit by a bomb. They tried to ID what he destroyed afterwards, but it was blown into such tiny pieces that it was impossible. Anyway... Let's move on, shall we? Wow. Okay. We now get to the weapons menu, which is used to set the parameters of your 30 mic. This will typically be done by the ground crew before the mission, so we don't need to go through it now. Moving on, weapons release data lets you select whether you want the release data parameters to automatically scroll in your HUD, or if you want to have the option to scroll through manually. Okay. Is that ever even used? I don't, but I know a couple of guys that do. It's purely personal preference. Gotcha. What does the display mode do? Now this one's very useful and we'll go through the option in a more detailed way. Please select this line and press enter. Ready? set up what is displayed on your HUD and how. So the first option lets you decide whether you want to see the release data on your HUD or not. Copy. Similar to what was in weapons mode? Exactly. The second line called CCIP Gun Cross and Colt lets you decide whether you want the TBB to hide behind the CCIP Gun Cross in order to declutter the HUD. If you do, you have to select yes. alongside the values for your speed and altitude. You can also switch between metric and imperial 
values for both. Okay, copy. Pretty handy when working with allies that mainly use metric. Indeed. So next you have the radar altitude tape, which allows you to display the altitude measured by radar in the form of a tape. Alright, got it. Now we get to another pretty useful option, which you probably remember from yesterday. The choice of speed displayed. Do you want me to go over it once again, or do you prefer to move on? I'm okay. Let's move on. Alright, the last option is the one marked for vertical velocity, which will allow you to display the vertical velocity on the left side of the HUD. And what about IFF? You won't ever need to touch it. Okay, please navigate to exit and press enter to return to the previous menu. Okay, back at the main menu. Good. The next two options are used by the sweaty, so we're not going to go over those. Finally, the GCash training helps you set up a false ground plane to practice exactly that. Ground collision avoidance, but at a safe altitude. And that's all there is to it. Go ahead and switch the IFSI button back into normal mode, please.
Tusk, one, one. Request startup. Stand by on ground. Nellis ground, Tusk 1 is 2 A-10s at Thunder with Kilo, ready taxi. Tusk 1, taxi Charlie, Golf Alpha, hold short 03 right. Taxi Charlie, Golf Alpha, hold short 03 right, Tusk 1.
one holding short zero three right. Push to tower frequency. Basically, uh, Wilson Creek to Milford and Delta. Dallas Tower, Tusk 1 Flight, holding short runway 03 right, ready for departure. Tusk 1, Dallas Tower, wind is 230 for 05, cleared for takeoff 03 right. Cleared for takeoff 03 right, Tusk 1.
Okay. Now what? Pull up, Test pull one, up. Contact departure. Test one, contact and departure. Now off departure, Test one flight with you, looking to turn two four eight over truck stop. Test one, now off departure, radar contact. Climb to 6,000, turn left for 248 and truck stop. Left turn for 248 over truck stop for Tusk one. Warning, autopilot. Left turn for 248 over truck stop for Tusk 1. Tusk 1, clear to resume on navigation. Cleared for on navigation, Tusk 1.
Torture that we're flying is going to be pretty standard for the rest of our time here. It's also pretty easy to fly. Just follow the northernest town over to Highway 95, then turn northeast and follow it up into the NTCR. Roger. This is pretty close to the Fighter 3 departure, correct? A firm, that's exactly correct. Okay, Kermit, well done. Since we'll be doing some training on waypoints and air tributes, we might want to add some extra ones for that and set them up as a new flight plan. Alright, sounds good. Let's climb to Angel 10 and get clear of Vegas airspace. Then we'll find a nice spot to anchor and work on these waypoints. Roger that. Also, please remember to keep between 250 and 70 knots indicated throughout the whole flight. We have a lot of things to cover and we wouldn't want to miss any waypoints as we're talking. Rather hefty women for some inexplicable reason. 
It never fails. Every time I go out to the bar, some fat chick is bound to hit on me. As you know, Kermit is constantly being chased after by Miss Piggy. So there you go. It was an easy kill. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you were about to tell me about yours? Alright, so this is an acronym for Big Inbred Farming Fucker. I grew up in rural Kansas on a farm, that plus chewing, and being into hunting, fishing, and other redneck shit apparently means I'm inbred. Then there's the fact that apparently I look like this from Back to the Future. <laughs> God, I see it now. What's that, the inbred part or looking like this? <laughs> yes. You'd better be careful. You need me to sign off on your training. I'd hate for you to get washed out and wind up on Preds or some shit. Ooh, that's not even funny. Warning, autopilot. Off to the west here, you'd be hard to miss Mount Charleston, or more accurately, Charleston Peak, at a shade under 12,000 feet. Where was it? It's going to be off to the west, your left side. That's, uh, your Air Force left? Still not seeing it. Dude, look out of the canopy to the left. Look for all of the green. Ha ha. Sorry, I couldn't resist. You were saying? I was saying it's not too late to get you into an MQ-1. So, the big conspicuous mountain off your left side is a really nice place to visit. There's a neat restaurant to grab some lunch at and some more fun roads to drive around on. Yeah, it looks really pretty. Trees and everything. Yeah, most of those are bristlecone pines, and they can live to be over 5,000 years old. They're really something. Also, it's usually much, much cooler up there, which is a nice change of pace in summer. And there's also a ski resort open when there's enough snow. I'll have to head up there one of these days. How long is the drive to get up there? That's yeah, not too bad. From the front gate, maybe an hour up and an hour back. I forgot to mention it, but there's also a lot of really nice hiking trails up there. Good deal. I love hiking. We're coming up to Creech here, and Creech is mostly used for RPAs like MQ-1 Predators and MQ-9 Reavers. They do pilot training for them up here, right? Yep, that's correct. Sometimes you can catch the Batwing operating up here. And the uh, Thunderbirds practice just to the north. The Batwing? Yeah, the Lockheed RQ-170 stealth drone flying wing thing. Ah, okay. Now I'm tracking. They also operate a lot of rotary ring out of here for the various flags and exercises. That makes sense, being a bit closer to the ranges and stuff. Exactly.
By the way, you can do the same if you, he said that, use the UFC, but he didn't say, oh yeah, I paused it. So it's function three. If you press function button, it says underneath it what function it will call. So function one is systems, function two is navigation, function three is waypoints.
Yeah, got it. 3742-00 north, 116-1104 west. Checking flying 9 on the CU shows L slash L as it shows in coordinate system. If not, press the OSB or line select key next to it to select the lat long mode. Now I remember. And then you press this button. and press OSB 17 or 
Now in the CDU, ready to move on. All right, let's exit the orbit and set waypoint three as our steer point.
Based on that flight plan, off to the right you can see the Nevada test site, now known as the Nevada National Security Site and its many craters. This is where we used to test our nuclear weapons. Yeah, wow, it looks like the moon. All of those from Duke? Yep, from 1951 until 1992 they detonated almost 930 weapons there. 100 were above ground atmosphere tests and the remainder were underground tests. They tested all kinds of stuff there and looked at using weapons for civilian purposes like mining and earth moving. There's so many craters. It's pretty surreal. Yeah, I know. So, just over the mountains there, to the east, is a uh, room. Aren't they downwind from the site? That's not a problem. From what I've read, out of an awful book, and according to some of the guys I know who used to work there, there were occasions where some sons fall out would get a little dicey, so they would restrict operations and whatnot. But then there's the whole St. George and Conquer conspiracy. Okay, bring me up to speed on that. St. George, Utah is like a 140 mile downrange from the NTS, and they have an elevated instance of certain types of cancers attributable to nuclear testing. Things like leukemia, lymphoma, and thyroid cancer, just to name a few. Well, they shot this movie called The Conqueror, starring John Wayne near there, in the early 50s. The story goes that they were doing some test shots here at the NTS during the filming, and a bunch of people that were there on set died from cancer in the years after. Damn. Yeah, not our proudest moment. That fucker is huge. Right, back to work. Now we're ready to build a flight plan using the waypoint switch we have introduced earlier. Get our current steer point on the nose and set the autopilot to altitude heading all through. Yeah, okay, John. So is this the default mode of operations during most of the missions? I mean, keeping it in flight plan mode? Especially during the ingress, egress, or until we need to exploit something, one of the other modes gives us. The flight plan shows us the entire route with waypoints connected by a green line, which helps you make sure that you're not wandering off the place you're not supposed to be, like into a dam west or across the border. Raj, okay. I'm ready to continue. Pull up, pull up. Right on. So, first a few words of introduction. To enter the flight plan mode, to make sure that you're a other, and a steer page is on the flight plan. Remember that you can have up to 20 flight plans, each consisting of up to 40 waypoints. Ready. Next, go ahead and enter the flight plan page by either pressing the FPM button on the Function then five on the USB. Let me know when you've done that. So this is the part. Yeah, he says function and five, but he didn't say function and three for the waypoint menu. But yeah, let's go. Done. Okay, so you'll see that there is already one flight plan stored in the CPU. It was prepared during the mission planning phase and was uploaded from the together with the loadout information and other information when you hit load all. However, it is important that you know how to create one for yourself independent of the DPS. Alright, that makes sense. The page should now be showing us 01 Auto MSN in the top and 02 New SP in the bottom line. First, we need to enter the name of the new flight plan in the scratch pad. Call it train. Once you have typed that, please press the lowest to left line select key or OSB 16 in order to create a new flight plan. Let me know when you've done that. Okay, train flight plan created. Good. You should now be back at the main flight plan page, and your new plan is listed next to number 02. 
and acknowledge the no SPI warning. Okay, how do I do that? Press the flight plan build line select key next to the flight plan you want to modify. So in this case, flight plan 2. To add a waypoint to the open flight plan, enter the number or the name of the waypoint you wish to add using either the CPU or UFT keypad. Type train 1 for the name, and let me know when you're ready to press on. Done. CDU has even suggested train one as the waypoint. Cool. Now I'll press the second line select key on the left or OSB. Don't be afraid to use the page that page down keys, it gives you the next page and you can enter the fourth. The flight plan is now set. Good. Take a look at your TAD and you can see that your flight plan has formed a rectangle over Coyote Delta. However, it is still open on the eastern side. To close it, please add train 1 as your fifth waypoint to the flight plan and let me know once that's done. Roger. Something serious? 
Pull up, pull up. Pull up, pull up. Pull up, pull up. Silver Bow, Tusquan 1, 5 miles out for runway 32, full stop. Tusquan 1, Silver Bow, clear to land, runway 32, the winds are 030 at 10. Clear to land, runway 32, Tusquan 1.
Altitude, altitude. Task 1-1 one one is with you at Echo. Task 1-1, one one, Taxi Foxtrot, Bravo to Bravo Ram, enter revetment Golf 0-2. Taxi Foxtrot, Bravo to Bravo Ram, Golf 0-2, Task 1-1. One one. By the way, if you didn't know, Tango Uniform, when he said uh, that to his HSI went Tango Uniform, it means tits up. So it means 
bonked, fucked. Alpha Bravo Foxtrot and Bravo to Bravo Ramp, okay. Whoops, where are you going? Slow down.
Alright.